Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives of families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can have real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered and in last week's episode I was sharing some insights about does my critically ill loved one in an induced coma or with head injuries feel my presence? You can read, watch or listen to the episode by clicking on the link there, below the video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to share with you if my critically ill loved one has a breathing tube, do they need a chest x-ray daily? I think that this is really an important question to ask and as it turns out it's one of the questions our readers of IntensiveCareHotline.com want to know. You see, for the intensive care team who are like fish in water, so to speak, it's a day-to-day -day occurrence to see chest x-rays left, right and center. And for the staff working in ICU, they hardly think about it because it happens all the time around them. For you and your family, however, who are like fish out of water, you only have a vague idea about how often a chest x-ray is necessary if your critically loved one has a breathing tube in their throat to help them breathe. But it's an important question to ask and a question that I think requires full disclosure. If your critically ill loved one has a breathing tube or endotracheal tube and is requiring mechanical ventilation, he or she needs a chest x-ray after the breathing tube has been inserted in order to confirm the position of the tube to make sure it's in the right spot. Furthermore, if your critically ill loved one needed the breathing tube for a diagnosis or a clinical condition such as pneumonia, acute asthma, COPD, heart conditions such as heart attack, cardiac arrest, cardiomyopathy or a pneumothorax, then a daily chest x-ray could be the norm and could well be in the best interest of your critically loved one since the chest x-ray will show whether the pneumonia, asthma or COPD is improving or getting worse. If your loved one needed a breathing tube for any heart related condition that I mentioned because a weak or sick heart can often have a negative impact on the lungs as fluids might accumulate in the lungs and therefore a daily chest x-ray could well be in the best interest of your critically ill loved one. But if your loved one has a breathing tube and doesn't have an underlying lung or heart condition and if your critically ill loved one is requiring the breathing tube for an induced coma, then a daily chest x-ray is necessary and once the breathing tube has been confirmed with a chest x-ray, no other chest x-rays are required. There are other, few occasions where your critically ill loved one is requiring a chest x-ray where they have a breathing tube and the chest x-ray taken is not because of the breathing tube but the chest x-ray is necessary because of other situations such as a feeding tube has been placed, a chest tube has been inserted, a central line has been inserted, a vascular catheter has been inserted for hemodialysis for kidney failure. In those cases, the position of those lines needs to be confirmed and once confirmed with a chest x-ray, no other chest x-rays should be required. What you obviously want to avoid is unnecessary exposure to a chest x-ray that is not of therapeutic interest for your critically ill loved one. Because as you probably know, you don't want your loved one to be unnecessarily exposed to any radioactivity, which is an unwanted byproduct of x-rays. And also, if your critically ill loved one is privately insured and not on any government scheme, a daily chest x-ray is only adding on to an already large hospital bill. And you only want to have a chest x-ray if it's clinically indicated and in the best interest for your critically ill loved one. But even if the costs for your critically ill loved one are covered, you don't want any unnecessary exposure to the radioactivity by any x-rays. What you need to be aware of is that intensive care units definitely have a tendency to take more chest x-rays than necessary, as more often than not the radiographers, which is the staff who are taking x-rays, are virtually only a doorstep away from intensive care and also doctors tend to order many x-rays and if they are in doubt whether a chest x-ray is really necessary, they will order one anyway. So therefore, if you have any concerns, you shouldn't hesitate in asking those questions. In general, you should always ask questions anyway and you should always make 
make informed decisions irrespective of whether you are a doctor or a nurse. And you can do so by reading our blog and also by entering your email below to get your free instant impact report. As a rule of thumb, you should never give your critically ill loved ones destiny outside of your hands and you should make sure that you have the most power, control and influence there is. How do you do that? How can you leverage your level of power, influence and control whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? You will get to that all important feeling of power, control and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn quickly how to get real power and real control and how you can influence decision making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Our free reports will help you with in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is dying in intensive care. Sign up for your free membership now and download your free instant impact report by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free reports, you'll also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions, how to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five killer tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to control power and influence in your situation. You will get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. And you learn how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care. And it's not what you think. With your free instant impact report, you'll also get four other free reports and the reports you will be receiving are the six questions you need to ask the most senior doctor in intensive care, 10 things you didn't know doctors and nurses are talking about while you're not at the bedside with your loved one, the seven answers to the seven most frequently asked questions if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care, nine myths of being a critically ill patient in intensive care. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of your questions answered and I'll see you again in another update next week. Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and I'll see you again next week with another update.